I just got finished playing four games with Agent Venom and now it's time to review him. Welcome to Nelson All Over Cards. Today we are talking about Agent Venom, the gunslinging guardian of the galaxy himself. So Agent Venom has a couple of cool things going on. He was packaged um, probably about a year ago. Actually, I have no concept of time anymore. Um, he, he's been out for a while. He came out in the Guardian Wave and he has some really interesting mechanics, some really cool cards. So let's talk about them. In Alter Ego, Flash Thompson has a four recovery and he has a printed constant ability that just states that he can control one more restricted card. He comes with three of these restricted cards, which we'll talk about here in a second, but it allows him to kind of expand out and utilize his arsenal to his full potential. He has a setup ability called Armed and Ready, which is a little bit of a double-edged sword because Armed and Ready says you discard cards from the top of your deck until you get a weapon. Now, what this means is if you have a weapon in your opening hand or if you have somehow drawn all of your weapons in your opening hand slash your mulligan you will deck out and resolve an extra encounter to card turn one which is the worst time well it's probably always bad but it's probably the worst time to ever resolve an extra encounter card because you are not set up and not ready however it does allow you to kind of get going if you don't have any of those weapons it does put one into your hand starting you off with at least seven cards and then you're able to probably get that restricted item or that restricted weapon onto the table also in alter ego he has a card called project rebirth 2.0 which is pretty good it's a support that allows you to either heal for three or draw a card. So I really like that it has this dual purpose. So if you don't have any damage on you, you still can utilize it to draw a card. It's really great to get in your opening hand, but, and it kind of gives Venom a reason to come back down to Alter Ego. When we flip his card over, his hero site has a one, two, two stat line, and then the printed symbiotic bond ability saying that he can take a damage. And this is take a damage. And with the recent rulings of take versus deal damage, take cannot be prevented. So you can't use an energy barrier or a force field generator or anything like that to prevent the damage that symbiotic bond deals or gives to you, not deal because that gets confusing, but you do get to generate a wild resource if you take that damage. So a really cool ability and really strong. Turns out utilizing your health as a resource, which is something that I've said before, but using your health, turning it into a wild resource can really help you hit the ground running or just throughout the game. It's a really good way to get some more resources. He has a really strong hero kit. So he comes with three restricted cards. He has two of the Venom's pistols, which state that whenever you use a basic power, you can exhaust a Venom's pistol to give you plus one to that power. So his stat line becomes like a three, four, four, which is unheard of. It's very, very strong once you get those one cost upgrades onto the table. And then he has the multi-gun. The multi-gun is so very powerful. It has three options on it. You can deal two damage to a single target. You can deal one damage to each minion engaged with a player, or you can remove two threat from a scheme. So even though he has that one thwart power bait printed on his hero card, once you have the multi-gun, he has a consistent two threat removal. I very rarely use the multi-gun for anything other than the two threat removal, which then allows me to use his basic activation for either dealing damage with an attack or defending for like four once you have the Venom pistols out there. Multi-gun is very good, very flexible. Flexibility is key in a single player setting. And so we love multi-gun. With all of these, he kind of revolves around these three restricted cards, right? The two Venom's pistols and then the multi-gun all have some excellent utilization that Venom can take advantage of. Throw in his run and gun event, which is a three cost event that allows you to ready Venom and every single restrict or every single weapon that he controls allows you to take advantage of them multiple times each round for three. I typically am not playing run and gun unless I have all three of my weapons on the table because I feel like it's a little over costed at that point. And if I don't have all my weapons on the table, that probably means I'm not fully built out. And so it's very hard to stomach spending three resources for something that doesn't affect the game as much as it possibly could. And I'd probably rather spend those three resources building out, maybe throwing my gun on the table or something else that can affect the game state a little bit more than that. But there are some situations where when you have two weapons on, 
run and gun still works, but once you have three, it's an excellent card. He has some really good defensive abilities. He has a spider sense that gives him Peter Parker's ability that says whenever the villain initiates an attack against Venom, he gets to draw a card. And then he has Grasping Tendrils, which cancels the attack. And if you pay for it with the physical resource, then you get to stun the villain. Then he has also Confuse in his kit with Behind Enemy Lines, which removes threat and confuses if you pay for with the Mental Kicker. And that can always be triggered because of his symbiotic bond ability. He produces the wild resource. So all of these cards that require a kicker, he can always hit, assuming that you haven't already used that ability. Some of the basic cards that Venom likes to run in a lot of his decks are some of the Guardian allies. Since he is printed Guardian, he all those Guardian allies in the gray aspect are very strong, especially when you combine them with Nowhere, increasing that ally limit up to four, and then also triggering a card draw whenever you do get to play one. So whenever you throw like, my favorite in his kit is Gamora, because Gamora allows you to discard cards until you get in do an event. A lot of the aspect events are really good, but his kit events are so very powerful. And so if you can flip into a running gun with Gamora, then mm, that's such a satisfying feeling. But he loves those guardian allies. He also really enjoys endurance because of his symbiotic bond ability. Since he is taking that damage, Increasing that health threshold up to 15 is very good it's with that endurance because he is using his health as a resource. Sight Holster is kind of interesting, right? It's not required, but it does depend on the deck build. Sight Holster gives you an additional restricted slot so he can hold up to four guns. And so I sometimes like running this in like a Justice build if I want a Sonic Rifle in case I needed a little bit more Confuse, maybe a Yarmjorn in Aggression to give some more damage. So it depends on the deck build, but I'm not typically always looking to run this, but it is something that I wanted to bring up and talk about. And then the last one that I do want to talk about, which is also thematic and very, very good, is the Symbiotic Suit. So Symbiotic Suit is the scary card, right? It gives you plus one to all your stats, plus one hand size, plus 10 hit points, and you're resolving an extra encounter card every single turn. Because Venom has the ready with the running guns, he likes the Symbiote Suit. So brings the stat line up to a 2-3-3. Three, three. The Venom's Pistol is a 4-5-5. Five, five. With running guns, you can be swinging for 10 each turn. Symbiote Suit and Venom thematically pair really well and mechanically pair very well also. I like running Symbiote Suit even in a solo player game. That one extra encounter card typically is offset with how powerful he can become. So let's dive in and rank the aspects in terms of what he's less, least good in into best. And he is good in all of the aspects. Venom's a very, very powerful hero. And so when I say that protection is his fourth best aspect, that does not mean he's not good in it. But there are a couple of things that hold protection back as opposed to some of the other aspects. So protection, he is spider sense, it's great, right? Giving him that extra card draw whenever they initiate an attack is awesome. He has a really easy, perfect defense build with his pistols. He starts with, with his pistols on the table and an armor vest, he's defending for five. That's very good. You can run and gun and ready in the hero phase. So you can utilize his incredible stat line for uh, either attacking or thwarting. Protection works really well with Venom. It's probably my favorite way to play him, which probably doesn't come as any surprise if you've watched this channel before, but I love heroes that can pull off a perfect defense build without necessarily using cards like Desperate Defense or Energy Barriers to make sure you're not taking any damage. With a defense of five, you're preventing a lot of villain attacks. Now, there are some villains that can swing much harder than five, and you do have to adjust your deck build at that point, but it's pretty cool because since you can defend for five, you can take the protection build pretty much in any direction that you want, making him really fun to build for. The reason I put protection in fourth is even though he can defend that well in his hero phase, Grasping Tendrils is his defense card. So the initiates an attack, then you cancel the attack. And so you, if you are running kind of the upgrade perfect defense build where you are preventing damage, you're triggering retaliates, all of that good stuff, Venom's cards are a little anti-synergistic with that because it cancels the attack and then stuns. So it's preventing two activations. And so similar to the Spider-Man discussion with protection, if you want to take an attack to trigger your protection cards, Venom's Grasping Tendrils 
is not going to allow you to do that. And so it's a little counterintuitive and a little bit anti-synergistic with some of his cards, putting protection in fourth. Moving on to third place, we have Justice. So Multigun can kind of handle the thwarting. If you need more thwart, you can flex those pistols into using his basic thwart potential. Justice piles onto something I think he's already very, very good at. There's not a huge reason to go to Alter Ego. There is Project Rebirth 2.0, which is very strong, but you don't necessarily need to do that super frequently. And how frequently you, I find myself going to Alter Ego to heal or utilize Project Rebirth, Behind Enemy Lines is enough Confuse in the deck to handle that. So if I use Behind Enemy Lines, I can sit with the villain Confuse until I need to flip down. And I typically have found that that is good enough for the amount of Confuse. So piling on like Sonic Rifles works really well in a multiplayer setting. You can Confuse him the entire game. However, in a solo, I feel like Justice is just a little bit more than, <laughs> than you need. And then the other two aspects allow you to amplify and bring you to the win. Justice, I feel like, is prolonging the game in order for you to find another way to win, whereas Venom in his kit can prolong long enough for him to win. Justice is incredibly strong, however, it's in third place, and the second place aspect is aggression. Aggression is so strong in Venom, especially because he can rush. I played Brant's rush deck from Step Into the Portal, and it was very, very strong. You can pay for big events very quickly. He has a lot of damage. You can stun lock the villain very easily with Venom, with his Grasping Tendrils, Drop Kicks, all of that good stuff. There's a lot of stun there. You now have Psylocke, which is confused in aggression. So if it is going to be a longer game, maybe you're going against Thanos or like a Loki or someone who prolongs that game, aggression, while the rush strategy may not work, you still have behind enemy lines and Psylocke that can confuse if you need to. And aggression just has so much damage that can complement the Venom deck that has the preventing of damage as well as threat mitigation on lock. So aggression is very strong, but leadership is leadership. That's one of my favorite quotes now. <laughs> leadership is leadership. And leadership is so good because one, he's a guardian. Guardians love leadership because of welcome aboard, discounting the allies that you're playing, as well as he has a great economy. He has his symbiotic bond, which gives him a resource every single turn. He has his uh, spider sense ability that gives him a card draw. So once you're set up, you have six hand size in hero form. If you're running because of the initiating of attack, if you're running symbiotic suit, you have seven then plus the resource. So leadership is the big money aspect and Venom can compete and keep up with that big money. He has a lot of flexibility and leadership because he has the ability to fend for your allies. So if you have big allies that you want to be utilizing them as the ones running the show, you can use Venom's pistols to defend very effectively and let the allies do the work. Or you can flip that around and let the allies chump block for you while Venom takes the spotlight and does anything that he wants. The flexibility that leadership has for any hero is amplified with Venom, especially because of his great economy and those excellent traits he has. I differed from the community here. Um, so the community was very heavy into Justice. And we talked a little bit about this on the Discord because I was a little confused because I thought Justice was overkill. I still think Justice is a little overkill. But our, the stun confuse lock is so strong. Justice helps with that. But now that we're starting to get a little bit of confuse outside of Justice, we have Psylocke in red, we have Professor X in gray, that I think Justice is starting to lose its shine. I think Justice is still probably the best aspect out there if you're just looking at a hero agnostic as aspect. I think Justice is probably the best, maybe leadership, but I feel like it's starting to do not, I well, no, actually I think the other aspects are getting better. And so I think Venom, while he works very, very well in Justice, shines in the aggression and leadership builds. I think those are a little bit stronger for the solo play for Venom. Community ranked him as an A tier. I'm gonna bump that up a little bit. I'm gonna put him as an S tier right behind Captain Marvel. He has an answer to pretty much everything. He has stun and confuse in his kit, which is crazy good. Flexibility with the multi-gun and the Venom's pistols, allowing him to pretty much do whatever he wants, right? If any situation is put in front of him, Venom has the flexibility to take care of it without 
changing the deck build. His kit is so flexible, which is the strength that a solo player needs to make sure that they can handle anything thrown at them. And Venom has that in spades. He's a very excellent hero. He's an incredibly fun hero. I love heroes that trade their health for something. And Venom is one of those where he just trades his health for a resource, which is still just really cool and really strong. I love the fact that he has multiple restricted items. Venom is a very fun hero. He's a very strong hero and there's not much he can't do. Alrighty, so next up, we are continuing on the Guardian train. We're going to be playing Gamora. Actually, the games are actually already done. And so next up on YouTube, we're going to be posting some of those Gamora games. And then we're going to be diving into Gambit and Rogue after that. So we are coming up on the release of the new heroes. And so I'm very excited for that. Once Gambit and Rogue comes out, we're going to be doing some Blitz um, playing we're gonna play them a lot we're gonna get through their hero aspects and then talk about them as well i'm excited for that and if you are as well go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it thank you all for hanging out go enjoy some champions and i'll see you around peace